we're still looking at a Hecarim meta. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if the Hecarim comes in. The thing I'm curious about is bot lane, right? Because for top esports, they have more than, than a few counter picks coming out for uh, this area. You can Great. obviously go back to the Tristana. We've seen the Samira come out against it. We know Caitlyn's still up, even though there have been, you know, a bit of hits there. And the last one, the Draven. We've already seen Jackie Love yeah. pull out the Draven in this matchup. So top esports, they have a lot of different looks for how they are able to handle the Zeri. We can see right now them are going with tons of engage, tons of lockdown, which of course against Zeri is uh, the best way to make sure that she's taken out of a fight. And so we, we leave questions to be answered. I like that you brought up the AD carry with how big Jackie Love is as the AD down in the bottom lane. So when we get Leona, we also get the Viego left for way, way strong picks. I wonder if that changes the mind uh, of Jackie Love, whether he wants to pick something so volatile. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I was going to say I wouldn't expect it, right? For Jackie Love, I mean, I think you could put like Malphite, Nautilus, everything on the opposite side. He's still going to be completely fine taking something that, that does require a That's little bit smart. more uh, respect in terms of positioning. But looks like TS might just default yeah. to the stock in standard. We're going to see Jinx. They're going to bait us and make us think we get the Draven. It but was, it was all so a we get standard. Sorry about that, guys. At least you get the Zeri. Uh, still on 12.4. Uh, we're going to be asking about the build here, Lyric, because you and I were having a discussion offline about, uh, you know, seeing the Zeri come through and trying to optimize her more towards crit. Not sure if that's going to be the case here with Doggo's first game. Uh, let's move on, though, because we got mid lane bans and Orianna's already been taken off the board. These are pretty standard so far with uh, mid lane is not yet, yet being picked. Yeah, and for the side of TS... I expect them to be going for a more uh, aggressive look. Again, whether it is something like the the Vex, obviously both Rise and Ari are off the card. So you're somewhat limited in what you are able to go if you just want to double down on these this kind of all-in play style that you've already set out for yourself. Uh, you, you do have other like roaming mid potential options there, right? Things like the Galia, which we haven't really seen come out from tonight, but still potential options. A lot of top li top pick lines are off the cards for now. Nar being one of the standouts to come to my mind. Obviously, Jace being there as well, I don't think would fit the flavor of TS's comp too well so far, though. I I'm looking at Wayward, and Graves uh, still hasn't been touched. I uh, wanted your opinion there, Lyric. The two cents worth it as Wayward really dominated um, Flandre on that set pick. Yeah, and I, I think he, he, looked he looked great on it. As BLG take away the Vex, so knowing what route TS want to go, but... Nar, Jace, Graves, I think those are your, your blinds once the Gwen is gone. Again, I don't really feel like Jace fits TS's comp too well. Graves would be fine. I also uh, do think going uh, with the Nar would also work out as well. But for TS, it looks like prioritizing Wayward's matchup quite heavily. Okay. Instead, just want to go towards a blind pick mid laner. And we hit on, we knew it would be something that would want to generate its own prio, something that would be aggressive. And they're just going to go with the Syndra. Build up that speed. Night Syndra as well. More than just fascinating. It's a bomb. So for top esports, getting a, a strong pick in the back of their pocket, we now have to see BLG put all their cards on the table. Folks, we've got a Jax. We've got a Vex ban with the LeBlanc and Orietta against Fofo. I was wondering if this would come forward with the Jax being taken off the table by them. Maybe even this. The Trinomir that doesn't get played in the LPL gets locked in. Yeah, so BLG bringing a bit of a side laning to their composition so far. Obviously, we've seen a lot of Trinomirs playing for team fights, trying to find those flanks, get on the back line. But still, wouldn't be surprised to see Bree just go straight towards that hole breaker and try to be a nuisance in the side lanes. Now for Fofo, rounding it out with the Zoe. So wanting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of contesting that prio in the mid lane. What do you now for Wayward? What do you take, Lyric? What do you take? I think I'd be more of a fan of them just doubling down in terms of 5v5s. Uh, right now, they're they're hovering this option of the Fiora, but whether they wanted to go towards something like a Malphite or even the Gnar, again, just something that gives you those options where you already have a, a jungle and support who want to aggressively engage. Both Syndra and Jinx function much better in front-to-back scenarios where you have easy time setting up the Scout of the Week. And yeah, they're just going to round out with the Gnar. So giving them a bit of options in terms of, you know, right, Gnar feels fine answering waves inside, but obviously you can play around that Mega Gnar bar and try and have an impact in those team fights. So again, team fighting, it feels like you talked about uh, setting up Jackie Love for success here, even Knight to some degree, right? We've got good engage on top esports. Let's go back to PLG a little bit because 
their composition, you already started with side laning, but I see a lot of working angles in it. Yeah, for the side of BLG, I'm actually not as big of a fan of what they put together. You have the, this mid laner who is really good at, at being able to contest in these mid jungle 2v2s, but Diego wants a bit more time. At level 6, they'll be able to contest for those river skirmishes, where Zoe just does so well, being able to pick up sums. And then mid and late game, again, I think it's going to transition into a bit of a 1-4 style composition. Breathe off by himself. The other four grouped up. Hopefully the Trinimir can win and push. Be able to move first. Try and find those flanks. Or just, you know, be able to take tower outright in his own side lane. Yeah, well, at least uh, seeing Breathe on something like this that is going to require a bit of flair is, is a good sign for me. Considering that for BLG, you talked about them setting up Breathe has opened up his windows, but a lot of the time, that's not what BLG are all about. We know this team can be quite slow, but running into this game, Lyric, it does feel like there's, there's certain windows that they have to play towards. It isn't just going to be sit back and relax. It's going to be make sure that we get the right movement into this game. As we welcome you to BLG versus Top Esports, I'll ask you more on that as we jump into Summoner's Rift. Because Top Esports, you want to know the stakes, chat? You want to know what's going on? They're six and four. They're on a four win streak. They're hotter than Gordon Ramsay on a swear streak in uh, My Kitchen Nightmares. Beat EDG, beat FBX, beat JDG, beat TT. Remember, TT are going to Worlds this year, so that's a big deal. And then on the other side, let's not forget BLG 7-3. and three. They beat JDG, WE, anyone's legend. Samurai Panda. And uh, almost beat LNG too. So there's a lot of big wins throughout the split so far for Top Esports and BLG. They're on the way to playoffs. And this win could be... What puts them a little bit closer in the bank. Lyric, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Welcome back, by the way. Where would you like to start? Uh, I feel like, you know, it's a good starting point just to hit on some of the things we've seen change in terms of 12.3 and 4, right? <laughs> Zeri has been pretty much nerfed everywhere you could yeah. be nerfed. Your, your, your charged auto attacks, your uncharged auto attacks, your E, your W, your ultimate. She's pretty much been hit everywhere. Uh, the only place they've tried to give back a little bit is making it so your Q now, you know, does get the multiply coming, the uh, damage multiply coming from critical strikes. So it's, you know, mixed bag. Overall, still a very strong pick from the impression pros give. Yep. But uh, not as oppressive as the few games we saw in 12.2 where she wasn't even doing that well here in terms of right teams were still not really falling in line with her. They they were willing to take the counter sides of the matchup and just try to win out faster in the game before Azari was able to come online. Yeah, I feel like uh, going past it where, you know, when I'm doing PCS, if Zeri's open, they take it straight away. And in Doggo, that PCS AD carry we know and love. Lyric, I need to pause because jungle pathing has piqued my curiosity. As we look at bot lane 2v2 and them trying to hit level 2, Tien took a path around a predicted ward on Raptors, so he hasn't done the Raptor camp. The ward expires, and I wonder if that throws BLG for a bit of a loop as he passed bot side. Yeah, I'm not sure how much it will matter for the fact that uh, Top Esports bot lane already has push. You can see, uh, I think it'd be quite hard to look for any type of early dive. Yep. If Top Esports were willing to go for that, that'd be pretty insane. Yeah. And for the side of Wayward Right, just pathing up to his strong side, pathing up to where he is, Pryo, potentially be able to get that Scuttlecrab for free, maybe look for an invade on the enemy top side. I'm more curious to see what Tien does, is it looks like he's starting to hover to wrap around back up towards his top side camps, rather than look for anything meaningful down in the spinal lane. There's a ward on the red taken, though. Note that BLG now will have a bit more information. Wayward pathing all towards the top as well. Wayward's about to go mega on top of Breathe. Nice little trade, but Breathe still feeling nice and dandy up here in the lane. A lyric, does it come down more to the lane for BLG from what we talked about in draft? This way, we just crunches away. It does feel like, you know, Breathe is going to require a bit of a, a helping start. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it, right? When, when you do have these champions who do want to thrive in sides, uh, it is very crucial to make sure that they don't fall behind. So BLG going to keep up the trend that they had last series of putting more attention to Breathe, who, again, ha hasn't been getting a whole lot of love yep. coming out from BLG's mid or jungle this split. has largely been left on an island, but you'd love to see his Trindamir get enabled. And then, heck, you get to a point later on, right, where if Trindamir's ahead and Wayward's in mini nar form, could just get dope. As towards mid, you speak of a potential dive. Nothing's gonna happen, of course. Chris goes in with the Zenith Blade. That's a pull back onto Jackulove. He buys the space, and now for Chris, they're gonna try and trade some of the damage off. Mark has already done his due diligence, as it is just a 2v2 trade. Wayward's nearby as well. 
And that's going to be end of that chapter while Wei Wei was also spotted heading down. So I like that Jackie Love and Mark just paid the respect. Yeah, Jackie Love and Mark not going to give in knowing that Tien is on a reset. But since Tien was on a reset, comes out onto the map first. Now we'll have a bit of a stat advantage, but Wei Wei does finish his back. So no action going to come out between junglers. No camps up right now for uh, the side of Tien. So this would potentially be where you want to look for a gank, but just look at the river. BLG have a, a beautiful ward line pretty much cut throughout the whole map, yeah. uh, both in top and bottom side. So Tien not really having any plays available. What better way than to, you know, secure not only breathe, but this very bottom lane as well. Give full advantage and make it difficult for Tien to make his path in. As Wade pushes up as well, we'll see what they decide to do. Look at top though. Uh, Breathe knows Wayward's about to go Mega Nar, but he's kiting his way around the turret. Has demolished. As he walks on up, that W from Wayward to clear it. Breathe not having ultimate available. And Wayward thinking outside the box, but Breathe luckily gets out in the nick of time. Yeah, that was really nice by Wayward to, to jump forward, guarantee the Q not only hitting Breathe, but also clearing away most of those minions. We'll be forced to TP back to lane now to make sure that he doesn't lose out on anything, but still shouldn't be too bad from his side. Yep. And I feel like we kind of baited the people. We came in, we show we show this fast cracked dog. We say, hey, this is Crack. TS. They're gonna go in. They're gonna be aggressive. They're gonna look for the blood. And then here we are, six minutes into the game. A bit of trading coming out in lane so far, but I feel like I feel like BLG overall doing a nice job of, of covering their early lanes. Uh because when you look at both drafts, right, I definitely think it is TN and Knight who have uh, the onus tool to make plays on the map, considering you, you are Syndra, who is able to look to trade aggressively. Combo in Tien with a mid gank, bam! You're mid and jungle now, free to move on the map and look for these plays, but hasn't been done just yet. Knight is level six. Tien, as he gets six, maybe things change. A way we will be to that point as well. And remember, neutrals lyric, and talking a bit about BLG's composition, uh, how do you actually get set up on the neutrals? Because when I look at top esports, I'm like, wow, their level six sucks if you get caught. For BLG, that's what I'm most interested to see how they, they pan this out, right? Zoe being a champion, wanting to be on objectives first, abuse, like, terrain, throwing out your bubbles over walls where the enemy has no vision and try to find those picks. Uh, I think Zeri wanting more to combo in with your aggressive support, look to, to skirt around these team fights, be on the more aggressive foot. Then you have, again, this more side lane oriented top laner. So I think BLG's comp is a little bit mix and matched. Uh, regardless if they get on objectives first, right? TS can face check them, run into them, maybe try and find a flank themselves, yeah. but try and kite out with the Zeri, get uh, Zoe in a position she's comfortable with is probably the way to go for the side of BLG. All right, well, for top esports, when you talk about just running into the Mark's ulti, TN's ulti, Wayward's ulti, a night with Scatter the Scatter Week. Scatter the Week. Yeah, a reset gives Jackie Love the speed to continue chasing. This comp will eventually go very fast, so... I like that for top esports, we've already got bot priority, setting up for the potential of Dragon. Herald's coming up in 30 seconds. Wei would use his ult on the top side just to keep breathing lanes the tiniest bit longer. And Tien's now up here as well, so not only are we getting good lane states here, Lyric, but it feels like for top esports, we've got a nice bit of setup and volatility to choose the lane of their choice. Yeah, TS, we saw their bot lane start hovering up like you hit on uh, Rift Herald coming up soon. Mark was spotted out onwards, though, so they knew their bot lane was hovering up. BLG's bot lane now having a window to push back out that wave means that Jackie Love and Mark not going to be able to hover over to that top side if TS wanted to look for a Herald, but it looks like they don't really care about that. They know Breathe has pressure on the opposite side, so it seems like maybe they'll just let BLG have free run with that and look for potential... Uh, gangster dives in this bottom lane. At the BLG, our 500 gold ahead in this early game. Top CS, jungle CS, a big deal right now. Way we're heading towards top. TN, you mentioned, uh, he's got a lot of pressure that's going to build up now with Ghost with Onslaught of Shadows. Knight walking down. Crisp and Doggo want to be let out of the kennel, but uh, for TN, okay, he gives them the cake. Still, you are going to be zoned off some CS. It looks like with both Tien and Knight walking away, though, uh, Doggo and Chris feeling comfortable to walk back down. I'm a little bit surprised that they aren't still fearful of a potential dive able to come out from Tien with him not on any vision, but they are going to respect. They do have a control ward right behind them in front of their truck camp. It's just going to be a trade for early game objective for the side of BLG. TS going to pick up the scaling option. And this dragon is Knight to make his way down once again. Yeah, wards are coming down. They go for the engage. Chris gets him under turret. Mark is okay for now as he didn't actually hit Crisp and Jackie Love 
excuse me, was able to pick up the turret plating. So with the dragon on top of that top esports, the immediate gold trade. We'll have to see where Herald goes as a response. Tuppies versus Spotlane were still able to guarantee themselves a bit of an advantage. Doggo's going to pick up this wave now, so he'll bring it down a little bit, but still looks like a 10 CS lead for the side of Top Esports bottom lane. And now we're getting to a point where we can see, right, Breathe level 8 having the ult available yeah. feels very comfortable just proxying between these turrets. If Wayward ever gets, you know, a bit too confident, looks for these aggressive trades, Breathe will win out. And if you can constantly force like volatile uh, short trades, you get into a position where it does set up for Breathe to even potentially look for a solo dive. So Wayward having to be extremely careful in how he plays out this lane going forward. Especially now that he's getting some damage, right? Um, we've got we've got armor boots here for Wayward. Don't know why I forgot the name of Ninja Tabi, but pickaxe, cloak of agility, Breathe well and truly on the Bladed way. Needed steel cap. There we go. Ninja Tabi is the old one. We're living in the past. No, I was gonna say. Honestly, I think it might just be nostalgia. Yep. Better name. Plated steel caps, I think it makes way more sense. But you know, this is me and you. That's, we don't want we don't want things to make sense. That's true, dude. If things made sense, people wouldn't be here. LPL's not about making sense, it's about making fun. That's what the first series was about anyway. Um, we're ten minutes to almost eleven into the game without a kill coming down. Now my problem is when, as a caster, when I set something up like that, you, you know, you and I are both responsible for this, and it doesn't come true, we look like absolute buffoons. So, I wish Top Esports would uh, give us, you know, some of that loving. Yeah, I mean, even even not contesting the Herald, which is something that almost every LPL team does, does every game, right? Doesn't matter about trades on the opposite side. Just for the test, but no, TS did go for the uh, cross-map trade in terms of the Dragon, and they've just been trying to enable their bot lane this whole time. We've seen Tien constantly hovering. Ooh, Mark finds a hook, but and Tien. Tien and Knight are on their way. Okay, so will they go in? Tien's like, nah, just baiting. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, okay. Not anymore. Maybe top, oh, top, okay. Wait, top's gonna happen, because Fofo's here as well. Wait with under the turret. We get bursted down. The ulti, is it available? Yes, but Wayward was waiting for Weiwei, who gets first blood. The turret's going to go down, and BLG, the faster early game team lyric, who would have thought? Yeah, BLG, they find the opportunity to say, hey, we know uh, Knight making his way down towards the spot of side. Let's look for the cross map, get the Herald done. They're going to get two charges on this. Knight and Tien are on their way to respond, but for BLG, they should probably be able to guarantee this turret. Still three man strong on the stop side. The tier two turret versus tier one on the bottom side. Jackie Love gets some solo gold, but uh, that's Breathe who's still becoming a bit of a monster. Tien wants to go in for the engage. Breathe ulti not available. They charge on as he flashes away. Remember, both summoners now down available as Solve comes in. Chris has joined in. Knight is running for the hills. Onslaught of Shadows away. Top Esports going left and right. And Knight taking one for the night. And I, I think for BLG, they'll still be happy with what they came for. Yep, I mean, BLG, right? They still pick up two turrets. We saw them smartly move their bot lane to mid to make sure that Doggo was getting waves th uh, that whole time as well. We're going to go back to this play. Knight trying to make his way around. Hits the scout of the week. Breathe doesn't have ultimate, so if they were able to find the damage, he would go down. But Weiwei and Fofo doing a nice job of playing bodyguard. Here's where it gets close, because if Doggo is able to land the Zenith Blade here, I feel like Knight, locked down, could just get bursted out. He should still be able to find the kill on Weiwei, but then maybe BLG would have been able to trade that one back. A nice flash, a nice sidestep coming out from Knight. I mean, a couple of nice sidesteps. That was really beautiful to watch, and that's why I love replays in spectator mode. I love replays in any competitive esports. Being able to see that back and getting a second look. Uh, just looking at the mechanical play from Knight. Again, a player we talked up coming into today. He's kind of the finishing touch on Top Esports right now. And you can see why. Luden's Echo picked up. He picked up the first kill for Top Esports in this series. And despite it being a 2k gold disadvantage, we know how TES works. We know what they want to achieve, Lyric. And Knight being strong helps with a bit of the pick potential before we get that all in. And I feel like that will be so crucial, right? Because when we talk about TS, in terms of if they're uh, able to get pushed in mid, which they should, coming out with the range advantage that they do have on both of their carries, that Scout of the Week can do so much to dissuade the enemy from being able to walk in and contest you on these dragons. I brought this up the other day, but uh, bring it up once again here. Just 2020 Summer Finals, Top Esports forcing JDG to walk into them, Knight finding a beautiful Scout of the Week through the wall. Things like that are always possible. Uh, now, BLG going to posture for the fight. So, both teams finally get to interact with Sterics yeah. over Second Dragon. 
Okay, two kills about to explode into, I'm going to say five. That's my prediction here as Breathe is even joining in with the Gale Force. Note that we have one, two Mythics on the side of top esports. Four for BLG. So there's an item advantage available. And Wayward doesn't have a Mega Narbar to play with at the moment. So BLG are pacing themselves out as Knight's damage still needs to be respected. Yeah. Three trying to find the flank, though. You hit on does have the Gale Force available. So if he can get close, he can get on Jackie Love. That can be the difference maker. But BLG Gone. aren't going to walk in. And it comes down to what we're hitting on, right? In terms of walking into TS's comp for the side of BLG is is really hard. Like, sure, Chris can walk in, try try to face check, try to try to eat some of the damage, but you get knocked back by a scout of the week that guarantees some of Jackie Love's DPS to come off onto you. You can chain that into the hook coming out from Mark. It's just so easy to to chain CC and chain your damage on the side of Top Esports against the the champions that BLG have drafted. And we're gonna see them lure BLG into more more uh, objectives like that. Top Esports now with two, setting up an advantage with uh, the Hextech Dragon. Excuse me, my T is backfiring. Uh, being the Hextech Salt. So we've got BLG now who are forced in that position. Even as they start the Herald here, Lyric, it feels like uh, the early game mitigated a little bit by the objective stacking and the fact that Top Esports are now only about a thousand behind. Yeah, four TS dominating to opt into the four before. You don't have TP on Wayward and Breathe putting up a ton of pressure in the bottom side. Instead, just going to look Ooh. for damage down onto this turret. Yeah, if that bubble hit could have been huge for the side of BLG, but that one won't land. And they still are winning, right? Because you see Breathe going to be getting damage onto the spotlight turret uh, right now. Should just be able to take it. Breathe Wayward down. might get here in time, but again, I really feel like he has to respect the ability to dive coming out from Breed, so he is instead just going to take his crown. How many Trinomirs have we seen in the LPL that uh, Lyric, you and I have casted and haven't really sidelined, haven't put pressure on, you know, these inner, outer turrets and played towards a, a very normal Trinomir win condition? At least this time with Breed, we're seeing a Trinomir that's had a great early game and is now starting to get in the business of top esports with another turret going down. No, not not the business of top esports. The business, dude. No one talks about what the kind business. of business is it? It's shady. Let's just say that it's very shady. Oh. It's shady, dude. They, they're kind of like there's 17 members in the family, right? LPL, 17 okay. teams, 17 members of the family. They're the ones you think. Well, they're never at the family dinners. What are they doing? TP out, by the way. That was nice. Knight actually getting trouble bubble as the TP finished. So it was a moment away from dying, but. The ones that you kind of like, I don't know what their real job is. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, so like, they're that that person, that family member. You know, we'll say that the second uncle that walks up to you out of nowhere just hands you, let's say, like, eight hundred dollars. Yeah. They're like here you go, here you go, kid. Yeah. Have a good time. And you're just like, what? What? Well, they bring in, they bring in like, uh, I got a car, I got an extra car. You know, this car. It's like a two, three thousand dollar car, and you think it's a bit stuck, right? That's what, that's what top esports are. What top so what are BLG then? BLG are like the, the grandpa who falls asleep at the dinner table. <laughs> well, you know. that grandpa has been the, I'd say the, the more proactive one in terms of objectives this time he around. Had he, had find... he had his meds. He had his meds and he woke up. Okay. They gotta be scared, man. Grandpa, he's seen some, he's seen some a word I can't use on broadcast. Really shouldn't use on broadcast. <laughs> I guess, I guess technically anything. Anything is doable. There are just our consequences. We are in deep water here, to be fair, though. So. <laughs> we are. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is how it is. We're not getting out of this alive as Dredge Line after the troll bomb. Look at Tien. Look at Tien. We begin. Let's get some fighting going. The chilling smart on top of Fofo, and he's out. Tien immediately is not nah, dude. I'm not going to this. Chakulov, 1v4, wants to take Crisp. And once again, we stay at two kills at 18 minutes. I love Tien. This game has just been a, a margin of different thoughts yeah they've been so hesitant on pulling the trigger uh again i feel like a lot of it does come down to how much pressure that, that breathe is putting up in the side lane the fact that wayward consistently having to sit there and answer even now finally having the hull breaker not really changing anything for him considering he has been on the back foot behind this whole time you can see for top though they are able to get prio in the syndra versus zoe lane so it does open them up for being able to have like tempo on resets like we see here now knight coming back onto the map first dragon up in 30 seconds 
Fofo gonna say, screw that tempo, IFTP. We're gonna get control of River for ourselves. And this is where BLG wanna be, right? Because now you're not forced into that awkward scenario before where you're staring down a Nautilus and a Scout of the Week having to force your way into that. As I say, relatively low range champions outside of, you know, certain abilities. Zoe E, the, the Paddle Star coming out, a Doggo's Q, but. Top Esports gonna brute force their way yeah, in. Again with the strange line, maybe the party begins. Chris buying time for now on the wing for Top Esports. They grouped up as a five man unit though. BLG taking the health bar trade as the Sleepy Trouble Bubble comes through from Fofo. Once again, Dredge Line is straight ahead, but BLG go left. Fofo again, poked down. Solar Flare though. Great as Breeze decides to join in. He's going to pop the ulti, but Top Esports are buying the time through it. Tien still with the Onslaught of Shadows is reset. Full way where Tien about to go over the wall. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Go somewhere, Tien. He's trying to find out for Wei Wei as Blue Buff now takes it a flash away. It's only one kill apiece, and I somehow feel like. Top base both are still comfortable. Yeah, I mean, both teams finding support, right? I feel like Knight did do a lot in that fight to make sure that uh, nothing else had happened to the side of Top Esports. Even just being able to blow the flash from way, way at the end, so massive with the Scout of the Week. Now sitting on Soul Point. So, at the very least, we know next Dragon, something's going to happen, right? Some dynamics going to change. Either for Top Esports, you're going to get Hexic Soul. You're going to be able to get those, those tiny little lightning chains of doom. And then for BLG, going to be on the back foot. Or BLG finally start being able to get ahead in this fight. This Solar Flare, beautiful, being able to lock down numerous members. You see Breathe wanting to put up that pressure. Able to get on Mark, able to force out some summoners. Crisp trying to zone on the opposite side. You're taking all this free damage from Jackie Love and Knight. They're able to guarantee the kill uh, going over to them. As, so Okay. And Breathe. Not, ulti not available. Hang on. Wait, we can do this. But no, he's out. Okay. Lyric, what were you going to say? I was going to say, looking at, you know, coming up, whether we're going to be fighting over topside vision for Baron or teams just being like, hey, let's handshake. Let's just both collect our camps until next dragon. I feel like one Im a very important point to note is the summoner spells that were burnt in that fight. Because for the side of TS, Knight still has Flash. Jackie Love still has Flash and Cleanse. Even Wayward having that Flash maybe can guarantee a really nice ultimate. You look at the opposite side, though. If Doggo gets caught out, he will just be screwed. Way, way, no Flash as well. So want to close that distance, hit that ultimate, maybe try and guarantee yourself a reset not there and breathe on uh, no sums up. So TS should be favored if a fight does break out within the next few minutes, which, again, we don't real. Dragon's up in 3.30, but maybe... We get some tussling over the spare and vision. That looks like a tussle on to Jackie Love. He's right in the middle of the rest of the top eight for teleport coming through, but Chris not e e expecting the damage. He runs away with the solar flare and a good trouble bubble. Disengaged from BLG, but uh, that's a couple of summoners that they took from top esports along the way. I mean, it was one for one. Jackie Love lost his cleanse, but Crisp giving over Flash. So, Fofo going to be the only one with Flash in the next fight for the side of BLG. They're going to be very careful. No repositioning tools available for them. Jackie Love, maybe he gets caught out. You could potentially just blow him up before he is able to flash away. Uh, if Crisp can find another amazing solar flare like he did in the last fight. Or even, you know, some kind of Zenith Laid into the queue. So, there are options there for the side of BLG. And heck, they're still the ones able to control the vision on the top side of the map. A lot of that right now coming down to numbers advantage. Breathe being grouped up compared to Wayward uh, pushing inside. Hey, in this slow game, I'm going to bring up a topic that keeps us entertained. Derry's still building the same build. Doggo is still going. Do we call this on hit build? Like it, because it's pretty much, right? Yeah. I mean, for Zeri, you fall in the same category as Ezreal, where all of your damage pretty much comes off one spammable ability that, you know, is able to proc things like on hit effects and get a lot of use, especially out of the, the sheen damage uh, coming off when you do auto afterwards. So. I'm not too surprised to see this build still continuing, and uh, I remember we were talking about the patch and saying, hey, no matter what's going on in the rest of the world in regards to any picks, we do expect LPL to still have their own flair of what is strong and what is good yeah. coming out of the patch, right? Again, things like tank supports have always been the way to go here rather than enchanters. Uh, some picks definitely being more of a mainstay or falling out that are strong. Also, Twisted Fate, I think, is a, a great example where he was so heavily prioritized in the LEC for so many weeks. But here, he'd be banned against certain teams, but wouldn't really be picked up all too much. Yeah, it was always that little pocket for people like, uh, who did we have last game? I mean, Crying was one of them. Angel, definitely Angel, another. Angel, doing uh, sorry, it was your gal, not Angel last game. Angel from Weber Gaming. But you're right, there's, there's like a couple of, of people. Lyric, 
I never thought I'd see the day where top esports would have a game with four kills in it. Where, you know, they're the ones who, who I don't know, they, they feel confident now moving to the soul. It is a minute, guys, until we get towards that soul point. Uh, Lyric, in a full 5v5 again, you'd be telling me the whole time how top esports comp makes a lot more sense. They've got proper engaged. They've got a lot more setup. And oh, Mark, but Mark's caught. Mark is dead, so maybe not. Now the setup's there. It's a big brain from Weiwei. Now he has engaged. Tien all the way, and it doesn't matter if you don't if you don't have your Chris nearby or your Leona. Lyric, you just steal the Nautilus. Yeah, 4TS trying to just force their way into River. Nice job by BLG being ready to find the pickoff. For BLG, this will be Dragon. For TS, they're, they're trying to make a play, though. They're heading up towards Baron. They're going to force BLG to make a choice, and for BLG, the choice looks very clear. They're coming to kill you, Tess. They are, but Top Esports are pulling off the Baron straight away. They want to take it themselves. Weiwei's the one to walk in, but Scatter the Week on top of Chris. Top Esports turn around the Unleashed Power. Tien with a knock. Well, look at the top side. Wayward doesn't care that Weiwei's running into him. He's about to go Meganar. Going gold only buys the time as Wayward's bar building up the ult into the wall. Top Esports top laner builds the bridge that buys the space, and Tether's BLG some kind of place. Breathe is going to get knocked up, slowed down here. Oh, through the bottle. He's out of there. That's a smooth criminal kind of play. Because BLG will start the dragon and should have this before anyone gets it. The problem is, you say Wayward built the bridge, but the other members of Top Esports didn't want to take the bridge. They wanted to take the highway, get to their destination sooner, which was getting the hell out of there. Uh, for, for BLG, right, it ended up exactly how you wanted it. You still end up with the dragon. TS being able to find this nice pick, finally being able to set up what they wanted, right, of forcing BLG into them, walking into that scatter of the week. As we don't get to see what are we done? continues to go on. Did you know um, Hex Gates are from Arcane? That's actually a fun That's factor true. today, so I don't know if anyone's seen that show. Pretty cool. Been talking about it a little bit today is no clue when season two is going to come out. But for this game that's been a little bit on the snooze side, people kind of waking up from their comas, wondering if it's time to, you know, get get out and get into the world. Probably give it another minute because we've got to wait four minutes till the next dragon. Baron is watered for now. Maybe if this wall gets cleared and BLG test it, but how quickly do you do a Baron? For BLG, I mean, I guess we're just going to see right now. Okay. Wayward does have TP, so is able to join the fight if needed. Top Esports making their way over now. For BLG, if they want to turn, it's going to be all up to Chris. See, wait, I want to see Wayward's Megan Arbar because that TP is going to come through. 4K, 3K. They're going to flip it. Lyric, they're going to flip it. Night Scout of the Week is big. He doesn't get it. He gets it a little bit too late, I should say. BLG pick it up, breathe. Over the wall, survives, take the hex gate out there, but Tien forces the fight, wants to get BLG down low, but Tien's just exploded. Look at Doggo, his scatter week does a lot of job, but breathe is right there on top of the enemy mid laner. Ulti from Wayward to save the day, but top esports end up trading in their favor, but not if they lose the Baron. Yeah, for BLG, you take that every day of the week. You lost two members in the end, but still able to get the Baron buff onto three crucial members. Uh, we're going to see what they are able to do now. A decent amount of wave clear on the side of TS to try to dissuade the push. And it is kind of sad that Trindamir isn't one of the, the uh, members with the Baron buff to be able to utilize, utilize that in the split push. We see right there, Chris getting the Q off onto Tien, locking him down, isn't able to find his way into the pit. Surprised he didn't just try to opt into an angle coming from the backside with his ultimate. But sets up for the following skirmish. Tien just gets absolutely deleted. Then for the side of TS, able to kite out breathe. The members are like, have a good luck, friend. We're going to get our resets off. TS able to finish off that kill. And like you said, they get something for their troubles. Coming back onto the map, we'll even pick up a tier one turn. At least we're ramping up now. Now that the big core objectives are there, and it's so big. It's Wayward just ulted. Wayward just ulted. And BLG, they want the big catch. Sleepy Trouble Bob will use. Wayward going to meet with his friends. And unfortunately, two versus one becomes four versus one very quickly. As he goes into Minina, he knows he's doomed. A reset, a kill, and BLG in this game looking a bit more comfortable than I was giving them credit for about 20 minutes ago. And this is the BLG comfort zone. I mean, Posted. we might have been wrong about what top esports were going to do coming into this game. A bit, un un a bit unexpectedly. Yeah. Uh, for BLG, they've kept pretty true, right? It has just mostly been focused around uh, the neutral objectives. It has just been waiting for these opportunities to find picks on the opposing side. The... 
Glimmers of hope for top esports are the fact that both Knight and Jackie Love are very big, as Breathe, I think, should be able to get away. He's out of the week, that was so nice. Breathe should have been caught out there by Knight's E, but it was the Gale Force in the nick of time. So get mid turret for absolutely nothing. And Breathe is starting to put the pressure on in the sidelines that we talked about at the start of the game. And Breathe, I mean, right? Gale Force and Vori Quick Blade, Sorelda's Grudge compared to. The, the build that Wayward went on the opposite side, the Hullbreaker. So, Wayward mostly building for himself, but hasn't really gotten a lot of alone time with Breathe. And even when he has, Breathe has still been the one who's been able to keep the pressure from early on in the game. Compared to Breathe, who, you know, had he went for that build, right, could have been much more of a terror in this 1v1 against Wayward, but still opting in to just be as much of a menace in these potential team fights scenarios as well, being able to stash on top of the enemy backline. Hasn't been able to find the kills on tonight or Jackie Love just yet, but there has been quite a few fights where he's been able to force out some summoners. But the problem now is that even if he finds his way on tonight, a knight has himself a Zonia. GA was just picked up by Jackie Love, so there is buying of time available for these big top esports carriers on top of Breathe. Look at Jackie Love run forward into a Trindamir, knowing Tien's by his side. BLG moving around the dragon, 10 seconds, Lyric, and top esports are actually not grouped up as calmly as BLG, making their way into the positions while side waves are pushing in and their attention split. Top esports do not have priority anywhere near this river. No, now for top esports. I mean, you could have Knight push out mid right now and just force Ooh. your way in. That hurts. Jackalove walks over, cleanses down. Dragon just goes the way of BLG. Two in their back pocket, top esports like, okay, let's just walk mid and try and force this inner down. They're gonna go for it, but Jackie Love already taking a bit of punishment. Is life stealing up quite nicely? And BLG don't even want to look for the collapse. They say, hey, we got what we wanted. We're gonna lose a turret here. Let's then breathe down towards the bottom side. Oh, they might just force this. Well, for Chris, Scout of the Week has to be dodged. It's not. Tien runs into the turret instead, though. At half HP, he runs back into the third tier turret, like, it's just down. Breathe is splitting on the side. This Trinomir, while he goes in, and the rest of the top esports just want to keep going. Inhibitor goes down just because they wanted to bring chat energy. And four, Breathe on the opposite side. He really shouldn't be able to respond. Looks like he'll get some damage off, but Wayward already here. Other members of TS will be following up shortly, so Breathe will just back off. As a Trin does, he's got to try and match the split push, but Inhibitor turret stays standing. And I love that Top Esports decided just to race that one. I, I mean, it was the right call, right? For the fact that Breathe did opt into staying. Uh, even the fact that BLG wanted to get resets off first, I'm not sure if they picked up any items in terms of those buys. Instead of just wrapping around and looking for the collapse, meant that Top Esports even had a like 5 to 10 second head start on being able to whittle down that inhibitor turret before any member of BLG was able to answer. We do see pretty good item spikes coming out across the board. We know now, again, with the changes to Sterex, uh, typically not going that on Viego's second item. Yep. We do, we have started to see a lot of Blade the Rune King, but instead Weiwei wanting to be more of a frontliner, going Force of Nature into GA. It's quite interesting. Still, though, you don't really have big uh, buff frontline other than your Leona, who, right, your supports, you don't get a lot of gold. Not the beefiest member on the map, compared to the side of TS, who do have quite a few frontline champions. Speaking of uh, Blood of the Room King, Gogo has one. Mark flashing, though. Pause my little tangent. That's a flash away. Okay, Mark and Chris can shake that a little bit, and uh, Top Esports now for the win. Chris with the Soul Flare. Of course, he lays it down. Jack Love has no cleanse. He's hit with a Troll Bubble as well. BLG, their opportunities. Weiwei doesn't want to take it, but Top Esports still burnt down. Weiwei about to go Mega Nah. BLG split for now. Breathe going back towards the top side. Tien wants to run down Doggo. Or oh, Chris. All oh, the minions. Where's Tien going? Okay, he's going up now. Horsey see, horsey do. And Wayward wants to charge as well. Top Esports just wants someone to come towards them. <laughs> but BLG won't fall for the bait. BLG are the one team not going in. I like it because for BLG, it's about throwing out these sleepy trouble bubbles, right? Trying to find some of that damage before TS are able to find their way in. Being able to kite out like we just saw BLG able to do. And now for TS, they're just going to keep forcing down mid. But look at top lane. Breed still going for the split push. Split to win. BLG feeling like Breed is going to be the way they take this one. Wave pushed in. Wave with backs away. Top Esports asking for help. But this trend to me, getting a little bit dizzy with the amount he's moving around. And as they go towards Baron, they start this up trying to bait Top Esports in. Because Top Esports are being pulled and stretched in so many different lanes. 
Yeah, still, in the end, going to be a net uh, neutral, I guess. Bad nothing <laughs> nothing going to happen for either side. One minute, 30 seconds till Dragon. You did hit on the Blade of the Rune King coming out for Zeri. Another item that did get buffed on patch 12.3. I believe it got the current HP damage you do got buffed by 2% on both melee and range. So it was 10 and 6 before. So now it should be 12 and 8. So going to be getting a, a bit more bang for your buck out of that. I think the price got increased by 100 as well, but that's not something too egregious coming out for their side. Uh, looks like we don't have any other significantly changed items. We do know Triforce also got a bit of a change in terms of the stacking base AD getting brought down by more health. Uh, don't think it really changes the identity that the item does bring. But now we don't have to talk about items because top esports are going to look to Beta Baron. Let's do it, man. BLG's Breathe coming in red hot. Level 18 trend to me, but Knight is zoning on top of the Baron. They want a 50-50 way with zoning them out. Trouble bubble taken for Baron. Secure TS now. Can they make the grand escape as Knight decides to jump over the wall? A mistake as he goes gold, but BLG going to be waiting as Wayward baits him in. Knight flashes over, but Wayward's challenging him while the rest of the fight going swimmingly until Doggo dies. Jack Elam! Once again, look at this Jinx. No one touching him. Kill Jackie Love. You have to kill Jackie Love. Wayway's going to step on a trap, but he ain't breaking Jackie Love's back. Untouched, uncharged. Rewind, Top Esports will take it all. Yeah, three for three. Top Esports, so they do get the Baron. They even force out Fofo's TP. Fofo was afraid of them chasing him down, I guess. TP back to Nexus. Dragon about to come up. Jackie Love still on the map. Top Esports should just be able to take this one. This should be Soul for the side of TS. Well, that's all going down with Jackie Love hitting the way. Replay time because Jackie, once again, freaking love. Untouched Lyric and having a great time. Yeah, and we see Bree trying to get in. Knight zoning him off, like you said, does go into the pit. Wayward going to find an opportunity here to jump in, try and buy Knight time to get away. But Wayway follows him. But you sit on the opposite side. We see Jackie Love just popping off. Tian doing a nice job with that ultimate as well to uh, you know, get a multi-man fear. Then you're just left with Jackie Love against the world. Wayward able to buy time here with the stopwatch able to come out. The fact you're able to get the GA out from Tien sets up easily for the choppers to guarantee that last kill. And for, Wei for BLG, right? Weiwei is their big member right now. And Weiwei committed everything on tonight, flashing over the wall to be able to, to find him. Just allowed for Jackie Love and Tien to do work on the opposite side of the fight. Lyric, two things are certain in life. One, NA won't win worlds. And two, Jackie Love will have huge pop-off team fights every so often. As once again... <laughs> what is with you and Asheen today? I don't know, dude. And the other regions. A little bit, little bit hangry. Also, a little bit uh, temperamental today. Top Esports deep in enemy jungle, though. And I'm worried, because way, way in a great position. BLG's a five-man stack. And Wayward having to walk down, not committing to the TP now. Troll Bubble avoided until Mark walks over it. And Tien's just going to wait until this wave pushes up. BLG looking for a trap. For BLG, they also know that Wayward was walking over. Wayward just stopped to clear a ward. So they don't have to like fall for any baits or bluffs coming out from TS in terms of how many numbers they do have on the side of the map. Are going to use this bear now to start getting the siege down. We've already hit on it. The range coming out from Jinx and Syndra. Tien's the ability to oh, oh, no! Jackie Love. Oh, my God. If there's ever been a curse, bring it forward. Mark's dead. Jackie Love's dead. I'm so sorry, everyone. As Breathe, he'll trade his life for top esports in a matter of seconds. I've just gone down the toilet. I didn't even see how Jackie Love got blown up. Again, he, he was the one aggressively walking forward. I think he was the one most far forward on the side of top esports, but he just got instantly taken out by the side of BLG. I'm sure we're going to get the replay of that one, so... You know, hopefully it is a little bit slowed down so our our old, weary caster eyes can see exactly how it happened. But still, BLG able to find the pickoff. We saw Weiwei and Breathe come from around the side to go. be able to, to make this happen. But Jackie Love walks forward. Bofo comes in. This bubble land. Cleanse instantly comes out, but the damage able to come out from Doggo as well as Weiwei. Just a cure once he does come back from the revive goes down. And then on, on the tail end of the fight, right, Breathe. Pushing back both Knight and Tien. I feel like that this Trindamir, maybe not being up there in terms of like his KDA's kills or anything like this, has been such a nuisance for the side of TS. And opening up Doggo and Fofo to be able to get down their damage in that fight. So, they have Sol. The Beast Boards, they might not have the Goblet, but they have Sol. But after that little pickoff, a way, way now with the bounty, but 
I think BLG extending this game a bit a, a bit further. And Lyric, I don't think Soul's going to define who wins this game. We're going to get to an Elder. We're going to get to that next Baron. Next big 5v5. Top Esports can go ahead and break that base. Even look at Top Esports base itself. There's only inhibitor turrets left standing. It does feel like at 40 minutes close to, we are going to get the decider. And it is going to be in that next 5v5. Well, you hope so, because right every time we get to a neutral objective, whichever team has set up does a nice job of zoning out the enemy team. The enemy team then chooses not to contest for the objective, and then we usually get a fight about like 30 seconds to a minute afterwards for no reason. That'll lead to the the way the game goes from here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make the safe bet of that and say, hey, you know what? One of these teams is gonna. Oh my god. What? What would be a good way to? What would be a family friendly way of putting it? You know what? Point is, one of these teams is going to end up not fighting for the Elder. There you go. You heard it here first. I don't know what the non-family friendly version was, but I get you. I'm on the same page as... Look, we're going to begin momentarily. 45 seconds and vision going to be cleared out. We're on the last items for a lot of carries here. A Knight one away from that with the control ward slot. You can see Jackie Love without his GA. Cleanse is available, but GA not is... Going to be open invitation for Breeze, who has his own. He runs forward into Mark. Good scatter of the week. Unleashed power. Pops the ult to his mark. Is ticking down with the ignite. They can't finish him off. And Breeze with his ulti as well in a similar position. Both going to go back. Both are a little bit low. And Super Mega Death Rocket, a worthy attempt. Yeah, Jackie looks for it. He's been able to find it. Even if he did, right? We saw the other members of BLG very conscious of that ability. Uh, kind of making a shield around their top lane. A brother. Now, Baron about to be on the riff. Top Esports, once again, trying to find a way to force BLG to come into them. I feel like they're just going to start this one up. Look at the Meganar bar on Wayward as well. It's pretty nicely stacked up to be able to find a team fight. Okay. Important. We've been tracking it all game here as Mark is going to be the one who waits behind. Wayway Wei looking, but still behind. Top Esports. Don't burger flip. This is Breeze is going as well, but they're going to do it. They're not listening to me. Lyric, they burger flip <laughs> it. <laughs> and Wayway Wei gets the manager position at McDonald's. BLG now with numbers vantage in the pit, cleaning out, but a scout of the week from Knight. Gorgeous as the lightning crash is doing its own work, and Fofo cleaning house as well. Doggo Golden in the nick of time. And I tell you what, I'm going to get some takeaway after this. And now for BLG, you see, they know they can end. They have TPs coming out towards the bottom side. They already have a wave there. Both Weiwei and Breathe are cross-mapping transitioning over. And I think BLG should be able to do this. You have 20 seconds, almost 30 seconds on Tien and Mark, but Knight and Jack have still have a bit of time before they're up. All right, here we go for the final push. I feel like it's going to be successful. The turret's falling apart, and Wayward, hang oh, on. Wait. Wayward's going for it. He's going for it, but no. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get too high. BLG had more members. And the damage comes through for a game one victory. Lyric. We flipped it, didn't we? It had to end in a big old burger flip for game one. Yeah, you could see the TS were getting quite frustrated that they weren't able to find any of the, the picks that they were looking for, right? You saw numerous attempts of Nautilus throwing out the hook, the scout of the week coming out from night, but never able to lock one person down and find the burst. And in that Baron, right, typically whatever team is, is focused on trying to smite down the objective or get the damage off, you leave yourself open to better fight positioning coming from the opposite side. And we saw that BLG able to get a ton of damage off with uh, with Doggo from uh, around the corner of the pit and then buying time for both Breathe and Weiwei to get in there yeah. and just start taking down some of these kills. So for <laughs> BLG, nice job. Uh, you, you won the flip and... I mean, overall, their objective control of this game was, was pretty solid, right? We saw in the early game, they were the ones picking up all the early heralds. They they were getting the setup. They were winning out in terms of hovering towards that top side, allowing Breed to do what it needs to do, moving down first. So for BLG, there were some nice things here. For top esports, they were a lot more trigger shy than I expected, especially in the first 20 minutes of the game. Uh, never really able to find their tempo because, you know, we've heard a lot of teams say, right, one of the things that's so good about top esports is being able to find their early game rhythm and, and, and then just force you, constantly force you to make decisions. That is not what BLG had to do this game at all. No, not at all. Um, how do you, how do we look at this in a very balanced way? Because I, I, I think you said that this game, what did you say this game came down to? It, in, in the middle of the game, when I asked you, what did you say the game would come down to? Do you remember? No, it's, yeah. it's, 
this I, I feel like the most critical thing for this game uh was the fact that for ts right again it, it's kind of about bringing enemy into you hitting a scout of the week hitting a dredge line bursting one target out uh, they got that Baron so low, they wanted to commit to finishing the objective, but maybe committing more wholeheartedly to the turn could have set up TS for more success. And honestly, again, I feel like Breathe played such a pivotal role, you know, no matter what the scoreline did to show in terms of, like, damage. Another good uh, performance did also come out from the, from the Zoe, though. Fofo doing a phenomenal job finding those bubbles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, consistently right person. We talked about the least, surprisingly, but, but BLG, a step-up performance coming through from many different